crazy store that messed with my head. I ain't doing night security no more, man. Bye, Carbidex. Look, I'm just saying, there's something about dollar stores, man. It's like, they're frozen in time. That's how the conversation started with my buddy Dave, a fellow night shift security guard. Dave was a heavyset guy, prematurely gray at 35. We were shooting the breeze one night while patrolling a quiet office park. But that's what makes them kind of creepy, you know. Dave continued, slapping a folded out pack of cigarettes against his palm. Everything's too cheap, too still. It's like you've walked into a fossil. I laughed at Dave's philosophy, flicking my flashlight across rows of darkened windows. Man, you're tripping. They're just doors. Not everything is a Spielberg movie. Dave just shrugged it and lit a cigarette. A week later, I took up a gig at Daisy's Dollar Superstore in the downtown area. Pay was good, almost too good, and Dave's words were the last thing on my mind when I got the job. My first shift was an overnighter, and as I pulled into the dimly lit parking lot, the eerie stillness Dave spoke of seemed to echo around me. The moon hung heavily in the sky, and the dollar store stood like a lonely relic against the backdrop of deserted buildings. The manager, a woman named Sheila, showed me around and handed me a set of keys. The place smelled faintly of plastic and stale candy. It was the kind of place that held a vague promise of a bargain and the lingering scent of mediocrity. As I walked the aisles, the teeny sound of some forgotten 90s boy band track echoed from the overhead speakers. I ran my fingers over stacks of canned beans, off-brand batteries, and toys that seemed absurdly dated. A sense of an ease began to wrap itself around me. It was quiet. Too quiet. The silence only broken by the distant hum of the refrigeration units and the occasional creak of a shopping cart left abandoned in an aisle. Once I finished my initial patrol, I settled into the back office, equipped with a bank of fuzzy security monitors and a worn-out chair. As I scanned the screens, everything seemed peaceful enough, save for the flickering light in aisle 6 that gave off an uneasy strobe effect. As the night ticked on, I could feel my eyelids becoming heavier. The monotonous hum of the overhead lights blending with the quiet whisper of some ancient air conditioning unit. That's when I first heard it. A soft giggle, childish and faint, echoing from somewhere in the store. It sent an icy shiver down my spine, but I dismissed it, assuming it was my tired mind playing tricks on me. When I woke up, my watch read to 47 a.m. It was then I noticed something on the security monitors. An unattended shopping cart slowly rolling across aisle three. The cart's unsteady roll across the screen had an eerie grace to it. A quiet spectacle in the solitude of the night. Rubbing the sleep from my eyes, I rose from my chair, my heart pounding in my chest. It was probably a stray breeze, I told myself, trying to shake off the creepy unease. I walked towards aisle three, my boots echoing ominously on the linoleum. The flickering lights from aisle six painted the store with an unnerving pulse. The shopping cart sat in the middle of the aisle, surrounded by an explosion of cheaply made stuffed animals. It looked like someone had tipped the cart over in a playful tantrum. I righted the cart and began picking up the toys when I heard it again. That same childlike giggle. This time, it echoed down the aisle, bouncing off the walls. I froze. My blood ran cold. My rational mind was screaming at me, shouting about drafts in old buildings, settling, but I couldn't ignore the primal fear snaking its way up my spine. Suddenly, a canned good hit the floor somewhere in the distance, the metallic clang reverberating through the stillness. Who's there? I called out, my voice wavering more than I'd like to admit. Only silence responded, a silence that felt heavy and smothering, punctuated by the occasional flicker of the light from aisle six. I slowly started moving, following the ominous sounds. Every shadow seemed to dance and morph in the menacing shapes, and my flashlight felt woefully inadequate against the encroaching darkness. As I reached aisle six, the light above me flickered more erratically. I looked around, squinting in the intermittent light. I heard pounding on my chest. My beam caught a glint of something on the floor at the end of the aisle. As I approached, I realized it was a small, old-fashioned music box. Its lid open, a tiny ballerina poised in mid-twirl. 
I crouched down to examine it, my gloved fingers barely grazing it when it suddenly sprang to life. A teeny haunting lullaby began to play, the little ballerina spinning with an uncanny vigor. The sound echoed through the otherwise silent store, every note amplified to an almost painful degree. My breath hitched, and a cold sweat started to break out across my forehead. The small part of my brain that still clung to logic was quickly losing to the mounting horror I felt. This wasn't right. This wasn't natural. Suddenly, a loud crash rang out from the front of the store. The music box's eerie lullaby was drowned out by the sound of breaking glass and the deafening blare of the store's alarm system. The fluorescent lights overhead flickered, then died, leaving me in complete darkness. Panic surged through me as I fumbled for my radio. My shaking fingers finally found the button. This is security at Daisy's Dollar Store requesting immediate assistance. I managed to spit out, my voice a hoarse whisper in the inky blackness. In the pitch black, the alarm's shrill wail was a monstrous presence, a cacophony that filled the entire store. It pierced the air, leaving no room for any other thought than pure, unadulterated fear. I tried to move, but my legs felt like they were wading through thick mud. That's when the lights returned, but they didn't just flicker back to life. No, they exploded back into being, illuminating the store with a ferocity that made me squint. Every inch of the store was bathed in a harsh, unnatural light. With heart pounding, I made my way towards the front of the store, my flashlight now a weak yellow spot against the stark overhead lights. Glass from the shattered entrance door crunched under my boots, and I raised my radio again. Officers on the way. Over. My radio only returned static, the connection apparently dead. A feeling of dread, ice cold and paralyzing, gripped me. I was alone, in a nightmarish scenario that seemed to warp reality around me. As I moved deeper into the store, a dreadful sight stopped me cold. The aisles, previously neatly organized, were now a chaotic mess. Goods strewn everywhere, shelves tipped over, displays wrecked. It was like a whirlwind had swept through the store, a whirlwind with an eerie sense of humor. Among the wreckage, cheap toys were arranged in a crude representation of an audience, all facing the music box from aisle six, still spinning its tiny dancer to a haunting melody. I felt a scream claw its way up my throat, but it died in a whimper. I was trapped in a surreal nightmare, caught in a tidal wave of fear that threatened to drown me. Suddenly, over the still blaring alarm, I heard the sound of sirens in the distance. I felt a spark of hope ignite within me. My salvation was arriving. I rushed towards the entrance, but my heart sank when I realized the door was jammed with debris. I pounded to the blocked door, desperation giving me strength, my shouts for help barely audible over the alarm. It felt like forever before the police arrived. When they finally did, it took them a few more agonizing minutes to clear the entrance. When I stumbled out of the store, the first rays of the sun were starting to peek over the horizon. As the cops questioned me, I couldn't tear my eyes from the store. When the officers went in to investigate, they found nothing unusual apart from the mess. No music box, no toy audience. Nothing but a wrecked dollar store. They chalked it up to a case of vandalism. A group of kids having fun at the expense of a lonely night security guard. But I know what I saw. What I felt that night. I quit my job the next day. People tell me I'm crazy. That it was just stress, fatigue, a too active imagination. But every time I pass a dollar store now, I feel that cold dread creeping up my spine again. And in the distance, just on the edge of my hearing, I swear, I can still hear that teeny, haunting lullaby. Hey guys, Ninja Gamer here, and thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, please feel free to leave a like on the video as it does help the channel numerably and does get the gospel on people's feeds as well. Please consider subscribing as we are trying to hit 10,000 subs by the end of the year, and it would be a massive blessing from the Lord if you guys did so. As always, guys, if you haven't done so already, the mailing million dollar question as well as a, uh, is in on screen or not, on pinned comment description if you prefer to read it that way. It'll teach you about how to gain eternal life. Who wouldn't want that? How to go to heaven. It'll teach you about repenting of your sins and trusting in the good Lord Jesus Christ with every amount of strength, as well as building that relationship with the Lord by reading the Holy Bible daily, praying daily, and evangelizing to people. It's great stuff, so please do so. As always, the million dollar question, as well as everything I talk about here in these end bits here, at the end of these videos, is not associated with the author or the story in any way, shape, or form, unless otherwise mentioned, is for you, the viewer, to read. So please do so. Uh, go give Carbidex some love in the description and the comments. Let me know what you thought of the story. I thought it was great. It was fantastic, as always. 
the original story link and the and Carbon X's Reddit page will be in the description. So go show them some love over there. The Amazing Mew, whose amazing music I use in all these videos, uh, both his YouTube channel and all the music will be in the description. If you'd like to use his music for your own videos, uh, make sure for the specific music you would like to listen or use, uh, it says that they are free to use because not all of his songs are free to use. Most of them are, but not all of them. And if it does say that, of course, make sure uh, to put a link to his YouTube channel because they uh, he, all he asks for is credit. So make sure to put a link to his YouTube channel down in this, your description uh, and possibly put the songs. I more put the songs in there for anybody who wants to listen to his music in his free time like I love to do. So that is more for that reason. My brothers have a YouTube channel to make plush videos where they're uploading plush videos and uh, they make great content. It's truly fantastic. And they're uploading daily in 2024. I make quite a few cameos over there. So if you want to see me in something other than horror stories and video games, go check it out. Uh, it's fantastic, and I recommend the 2021 videos. Those are some of my favorites. My youngest brother, Cole, wants to be a rapper, so I'm leaving a link to his YouTube channel and a SoundCloud for his music. The Cole is his name. It's great stuff, so please, please go check that stuff out. It's great. Uh, the Barron County Anthology by Random Abolition 468, as well as a former stalker, texted me this morning. She's been dead for a year by Tier 1000. Both of those playlists will be in the description. Some of my favorite song or songs stories i've done here on the channel so far if you're a fan of the children of the oak walker story if you are a fan of the children of the oak walker story uh and you haven't yet done so the baron county anthology is everything before that of his children of the oak walker is made by random babylon 468 as well so be sure to catch up if you haven't done so and if you've already caught up and you want more of the children of the oak walker before i narrate it obviously um i'm leaving a link to random babylon 468's reddit page in the description so if you want to or read ahead. Be sure to do so. Link will be in the description. Um, and with that, guys, I've done every single short er Carbidex story. I believe. I believe that's the last one. Maybe there's one more. Maybe there's one more. Yeah. This was a good one, though. Uh, I'm really sorry if anybody heard anything in the background. You might hear a low buzzing. I figured that would be better than uh, other sounds and stuff like that. So if you did hear both things, I do apologize. It's late at night. I need to get this out. I don't want to go over to my Nana's. Um, I'd rather film here tonight. And so, yeah. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Most likely no... Well, I can say almost definitely no stream tonight. Um... Maybe tomorrow. We'll see. I got stuff to do tomorrow, so I need to get some good rest. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, guys, this is Ninja Gamer signing off.